Thanks for joining us for this podcast from Atlee Church. Atlee is a safe place for those who've given up on church or never went. Our mission is to reach seekers and equip believers to love God, love themselves, love others, and serve the world. We'd love to have you connect with us at one of our physical campuses or online for a weekend service. You can find out more about our locations and service times on our website. We hope that you will be encouraged and challenged to take the next step in your personal faith journey through the message you're about to hear. Well, good morning, everyone. You guys doing all right? You survived Christmas? All right, good. Turn to somebody next to you real quick at all of our campuses and say, we're near the end. Can you do that for me real quick? We are near the end. Isn't it crazy that 2018 is about to close and we're about to enter going into 2019? And I'm excited to be with you today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Trey Kreitzer. I am our Scottsville's campus pastor and just one of the teaching pastors here on staff. And I'm so glad that you decided to join us for this service today because it's one of those kind of standalone messages, but it's one of those things that I really felt like God put something really cool in my heart as I was thinking about my new year and what God wanted to do in my life. And I hope it resonates with you as well. But before we jump in, I do want to share some incredible things that we got to experience as a church over the Christmas holiday, which was awesome. All of our campuses had a way in which we were giving to others around us in need. Here in Mechanicsville on the West End campus, you guys collected so many presents for kids in the community that didn't have a Christmas present. And it looked like a mall upstairs in our uh, foyer room. It was crazy to see uh, all the gifts that you gave and how generous you were to help people around this community have a Christmas gift. And then at our Scottsville campus, we did Operation Christmas Child and collected over 200 boxes to be sent all over the world to kids who are in need and get a Christmas present because of what our church was able to do. And then even our Northside campus, which was so cool, they um, got connected with Toys for Tots and collected over 20 gifts for families and 20 families were able to have Christmas gifts because of that campus as well. And Charles kind of leading the charge in that. Isn't it exciting to be a part of a church that does that? I just thought that was amazing. And then we fast forward a little further and we get to our Christmas Eve services. How many of you were here for our Christmas Eve services? Awesome. So glad that y'all got to experience that. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. But we had um, pretty much close to 1,400 people at all of our campuses attend a Christmas Eve service. And we had over 40 people cross the line and make a decision to follow Christ with their life and accept them into their life for the first time. Isn't that awesome? I mean, how cool is it to be a part of that? To be a part of a church that's making a difference in the lives of people. And so just know, just as much as our staff plays a part in that, each one of you who call this place home play a part in that as well as far as affecting and ministering to these people who we got to see make an incredible life change in their life. Um, for me and my family, we had a good Christmas. Did you guys have a good Christmas with your families? Yeah, a few of you, good. The rest of you, I'm so sorry. Um, but for me and my family, we had a great Christmas. Um, we kind of hung out at home this year, which was like the best decision ever. Instead of running around to all the grandparents' house and all the other people's house, we just kind of home-based it at our house and said, if anybody wants to come over, y'all can just come over to our place. And it was neat. We had all the grandparents show up and they brought bukus of gifts for our son. This is kind of like his big first real Christmas. He's almost two. So he was like annihilating presents and flipping over the tree. And it was, it was wild at our house. But it was so cool to see all our grandparents bring these gifts and hang out with us and spend time with our son. And for me, I thought the focus for him would have been, man, Look at all these gifts. I mean, he had a Power Wheels Jeep, a little train set. He had a basketball hoop that goes in our living room. And I think we're going to break all of our windows. Um, but he had all this cool stuff that he got. And then to top it all off, he had all his favorite people come to see him. And so they're all around. All the grandparents, aunt and uncles were hanging out with him. So I thought, man, his focus 
would have been in all the gifts and all the people. But yet, if you're a parent, you know this. My dad warned me about this when I was younger. He said, you know, don't spend a lot on Christmas because what your kid's going to end up doing is playing with stuff that you didn't get him, right? Like boxes and weird stuff. Anybody have that experience with their kids? Well, my dad told me this, and I didn't want to believe him because I thought my son was way smarter than that um, because he's my son, right? Uh, but so we were hanging out with him, and we were like, okay, um, do you want to hang out and play with your gifts? And I look over. And our tree is kind of like falling apart at this moment. So my wife goes to get all the cleaning materials. And she brings out this old crusty broom from our like mudroom area. And it was hanging out beside the Christmas tree. And my son was obsessed with it. All he wanted to play with was the crusty broom. He didn't pay attention to anybody. He wasn't playing with his toys. Take a look at this picture. This is my son. Out of everything we could give this kid, right? I should have just went into our mudroom and wrapped that gift up and given it to him. He would have had a blast. And we would have had a great bank account. Um, but it's just awesome um, Christmas time to have these moments and stuff. But what I noticed in my kid, and maybe you notice it in your kids as well, is he got distracted. He got distracted really easily. I mean, he had everything he wanted around him. He had all the presents, all the people that he could ever want. But yet he got distracted with a broom. And, you know, I don't know where that came from. I know your kids are like that too, so my kid's not the only one. Um, But I think our kids teach us something about distractions that we didn't really even know about because it's easy to get distracted. And so as we're going from 2018 to 2019, what I want to do today is talk about something that I experienced in my life as I started thinking about this new year. Each year, I try to, at the the end and the close of a year, kind of just reminisce about what happened throughout the year. And then I also want to take time to think about what I want the next year to look like in my life, my family's life, and all of that. And I kind of began to ask myself a bigger question this year. And here was the question that I asked myself. And maybe you asked yourself a similar question now that we're at the end of the year. If I could go back and change one thing about this year, what would I change? It's a big question, isn't it? If I could go back and change one thing this year, what would I change? And I think a lot of us, we get to the end of a year and we start making all these goals. We start creating all of these things that we want to change and do. And, and it honestly gets a little overwhelming. But what I wanted to do this year is do something a little different. I wanted to think about what is the one thing that I would want to change? One thing. Not a thousand, not 10, just one. One thing I would want to change about 2018. And this is personally what I came up with for myself is this. This is my answer. I wish I could have been less distracted. I wish I could have been less distracted. I look back on my year and yet it was a great year. I I felt like, you know, it was good for me, my family, everybody. But there were times, if I were to be honest, that I found myself like my son playing with his broom, instead of being focused on the things that I thought were important or the things that I knew were important, and maybe the things that God wanted me to have in my life, I got distracted. I got distracted in focusing on the wrong things. And I don't know if any of you can relate to that, but that's just how my year was. I felt like I was distracted by a lot of people that I shouldn't have been as focused on. I think I got distracted when I was at home and not spending enough time with my family and and my boy. I think I got distracted and kind of dropped the ball on some friendships this year because I got distracted. And I don't know what your your year's been like, but maybe you're kind of in the same spot as well. I found that there's so many times where it's easy to get distracted and miss out on what's going on in our present life. We get so distracted with things and and stuff that we should never be focused on, and watching TV, playing on our phones instead of listening or paying attention to people around us, and we get distracted, and we miss out on what God wants to do in our lives, and we miss out on the great things our families could be doing and the people that really deserve our attention. And so today, that's what I want to spend some time talking about. The title for our conversation together today is this, Defeating Distractions. 
defeating distractions, because I felt like if I could change one thing and get rid of my distractions, and you all could do the same, figure out what your one distraction is, then our 2019 could look completely different and could change for the better if we were to take time to think about this. Here's the definition of the word distraction. Here's kind of a, a big idea. It says this, a thing that prevents someone from giving full attention to something else or someone else. A thing that prevents someone from giving full attention to something else or to someone else. So if that's the working definition for our conversation together today, what does your distraction life look like? Where are you missing out on your life because you're distracted by things that do not deserve your attention? It's so funny, even our phones have caught on to this. I don't know if you've downloaded the new um, software for the iPhone, if those of you have iPhones. My wife recently did, and I changed my mind and decided not to because this is what it does. It tracks now how much time you're spending on different things in your life when it comes to your phone. It tracks different apps. It shows you how much you were social networking, which is a huge distraction for us, isn't it, if we're being honest? It shows us how much we were doing other things like on the internet or Facebook or watching the news, all this kinds of stuff. So over time, it tells us to put our phone away and go live our life. (laughs) Not a really fun thing to have on your phone these days, is it? But our phones have even caught on that we're so distracted that they're telling us how distracted that we are. But yet we still stay distracted because it's easier, isn't it? It's easier just to look at everybody else's life on social media than live our own. It's a lot easier to see what's going on around in the world instead of seeing what's really going on in our world. And I think if our phones have caught on to it and our families have caught on to it, it's about time we personally catch on to what God wants to do in 2019 so that we don't stay distracted. And so today, what I want us to do is we're going to look at a passage of Scripture together. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up to the book of Luke, and we're going to look at chapter 10 together. And we're going to look at some people that found themselves distracted. Now, for those of you who think distractions are just in our day and age, it was happening way long ago, just as much as it is today. It just takes on different forms. And so we're going to read a story of a guy, his name is Luke, he recorded this passage of Scripture And he's recording this conversation that Jesus is having with these two women. And I want you, as we're reading this story, to think about which one you are, which person you can identify with the most. And we're going to pick it up, Luke 10, verses 38 through 42. And this is what it says. It says, as Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted. Everybody say distracted. Distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just gets to sit here while I do all the work? Sounds like what my wife tells me on a daily basis. But it says, tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all of these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will, be not, it will not be taken from her. And so we got two people in this scenario We got Martha and we got Mary, who have approached this situation two different ways. Mary is so consumed with getting to know Jesus and spending time with him. Where we look at Martha, she's so distracted by other things going on that she's missing out on this moment that she could spend with the Son of God. And I think too, if Jesus were in our midst and we find ourselves in the same situation, who would we be? Would we be Mary? A lot of us would like to say that we'd be Mary. But if we're honest, we're probably 
would miss out on Jesus right in front of us because we were playing something on our smartphones, wouldn't we? Martha was distracted, just like some of us are today. And so what I want to do, I want to look at their story, and I want us to figure out how we can pick some things out of this story that also apply to our story so that we can live 2019 with less distraction. So hopefully when you came in, you got one of these. It's a program. Go ahead and pull that out. And we're going to fill in three blanks on the back together. And as we do this, I want you to think about the different ways in which you can become less distracted this coming new year. The first thing that I see in this story that we just read, number one is this, is we have to identify your distraction. We have to identify what our distractions are. Identify your distraction. This is what the scripture we just read said this about Martha. It said Luke 10 40, but Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. So she was distracted by cooking a meal. She was distracted by doing things for God instead of being with God. Big difference. For Martha, her cooking and working was her distraction, and she was missing out on Jesus right there in front of her, to where Mary's in the other room, hanging out, having conversation, getting to know her Savior. And I can imagine when Luke is recording this, because I asked myself this, why would this story be included in the New Testament of our Bible, especially when we're talking about Jesus, because we see Jesus do so many great things that are recorded in our New Testament. But why is this conversation recorded of him just hanging out with these two women? I think there's a lot of truth in what happens when we get distracted. We miss out on what God has right in front of us. We miss out. We miss out on the families that God has given us. We miss out on the work that God has given us. We miss out on the people that he has strategically put in our lives. We miss out on seeing him do anything in our lives because we get distracted, just like Martha did. Now, I can understand some of us probably relate a lot to Martha because there have been some times, especially when my wife is pregnant, this thing called nesting. Anybody know about nesting? It, it is a catastrophe, all right? Everything in the house has got to be cleaned and everything's got to smell like the Cheesecake Factory when you come in and this meal that has to be prepared. And if you have guests over, whoa, right? Like we got to go through the whole house if somebody steps foot in the front door. And some of us relate to that, right? Because that's just how we're wired. But at the same time, I wonder how many times we miss out on things because of the fact that we're trying to do so much instead of just be present in the life that God has given us. I know for me, if I were to be honest with you, I would be Martha in this story. Especially looking back at my life, there were some distractions that I struggled with this year. I remember one night, my wife and I, we were just hanging out. We just put our son to bed and I was just putzing around on my phone. I didn't know how long I'd been on it. And she looks over at me and she says, hey, you going to spend any time with me tonight? And I was like, sure, I'm, I'm with you. I'm right, I'm right beside you. And she's like, you're anywhere but beside me right now. And when you hear stuff like that from people that you love and care about, you have to realize something's got to change. And for me, that's just what I went through this year. But I know you have your same distractions as well at home, at work. So what are your distractions? What are you currently being distracted by? Let's take a moment just to identify what ours could be. And so in the blank there, you'll see where you just wrote, identify your distraction. Put whatever you think your distraction is right now on that. And if you don't have a pen, just kind of mentally think about what is your distraction right now? Because I Googled most common distractions and here's what came up. Checking email. Social media, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the others out there. TV, a.k.a. Netflix. We're at an all-time high on binge-watching shows. And some of you watched some great ones this Christmas. I know I did, but it becomes a distraction. Junk food was one on the list. Procrastination. 
music, inward dialogue, or thoughts. And so these were just the most common distractions that I found when I was searching online. But yours may be different. So identify, what is your distraction this morning? What is keeping you from living the life that God has created you to live? What is your distraction? The second piece here, once we identify your distraction, like I say, go ahead and write that down. Kind of take a mental thought of what your distraction is. As we move into the second thought, when we look at this story of Martha and Mary, the second thing we have to realize is that your distractions can be detrimental. Your distractions can be detrimental. Let's look at Luke 10, 41 again in the passage we just read. It says, but the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. And that's what distractions do. They keep us worried. They keep us stressed. They keep us focusing on the wrong things instead of the right things. And what happens is, is we, like I said, miss out on all that's right in front of us. And so it was beginning to affect Martha's life in this moment. And I would probably venture to say even further, even after Jesus was gone, after she realized what she just missed out on. And I think the problem for all of us is that all these distractions we think aren't that bad, right? I'm just on social media for a little bit. I'm just watching this TV show again. I'm just kind of in my own mind again today. Those are excuses we begin to make for the distractions that we have in our life. And like I said, it causes us to miss out. It causes us to be focused on the wrong things instead of the right things. And so today, do you realize how detrimental your distractions are in your life right now? Because a lot of us think they're no big deal. But over time, they can be a really big deal. I was watching um, YouTube, which is awesome distraction, right? And um, I was putzing through it, trying to find some stuff for this um, message this week. And I came across this video. It's like this animated video they made on distractions. And I was, as I was watching it, I felt like my heart kind of like fell out my chest in the moment I was watching it. Because it literally made me think about how my distractions are affecting other people, especially those closest to me. And so I want you to watch this video real quick, and I want you to think about how detrimental your distractions really can be. Take a look at this. Crazy to think about. We can miss out on so much being distracted, can't we? I don't know if that video hit home for you, but I tell you what, it hit home, it hit home really big for me this week. Thinking about last year and how I want to live different this year. And think about that dad. He probably didn't think that his distraction was that detrimental, right? He's just playing on his phone. He's just seeing what everybody else is doing. But he's missing out on what's right in front of him. And I think a lot of us have things that God has put right in front of us that we totally are missing out on. And so today, I want you to realize that your distraction may seem innocent or just kind of when you're bored, kind of thing that you do, but it's one of those things that really can be detrimental to your life and people's lives around you, especially those who are closest to you. And I don't know about you, but I don't want my life to look like that. I don't want another year of my life to look like that. I want to be fully present in the life that God has given me. I want to be fully present with my family. I want to be fully present at work. I want to be fully present with my wife. I want to be fully present with my friends. I want to be fully present with people around me. I don't want to be known as someone who's distracted. And I hope you don't either. Because if not, our lives will struggle because of it. These distractions can be detrimental. Which leads us to our third thought that's way less depressing, I promise. Number three is this. Number three, discover where your focus should be. Discover where your focus should be. So we talked about identifying what our distraction is. And then once we realize that these distractions can be harmful to our lives, the last thing that you and I have to do is discover where our focus should be. 
because then we have to take a focus shift. We have to focus on the things that are important so that we don't fall back into the trap of distraction. Let's look at our verse again in Luke 10. It says, there's one more thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered. Everybody say discovered. Discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. Mary discovered something that Martha couldn't discover. When Mary wasn't distracted by all the things and preparing and doing and all these things, she was just able to be. She was able to be around Jesus. And she was recorded for having this great moment in her life to spend with Jesus. Mary had found something that was right in front of her. And once she discovered it, there was nothing that was going to take her away from it. And so you and I, as we enter this year, have to figure out what do we want our focus to be? We have to discover what God wants for our lives, where he wants to put our attention in the right places. And so today, what are some things that you should be focused on? Is it your family? Is it your time with God? Is it your spouse? Maybe your kids could use a little bit of attention. I don't know what it is. Maybe your parents could use a little bit of attention. I don't know where you fall out on that, but we have to discover what needs our attention. Because if not, we'll stay distracted. And so here's the big question I want us to answer as we think about what our focus should be for 2019. And this requires us all being a little honest with ourselves this morning. And the question is this, if I were not distracted, what would be the first thing in my life that could use some more attention? It's a big question I want us to wrestle with as we close out our time together. If I were not distracted, what would be the first thing in my life that could use some more attention? So it's important for us to identify our distraction, but it's equally as important for us to figure out what our focus should be. What is it that God wants us to be more focused on and give attention to? And it's different for all of us. Because some of you need attention here and some of you need attention there. But I think all of us can find that weak spot in our lives. And maybe you don't know what it is. Like you honestly don't know what your distraction is. I can promise you this. All you have to do is go to somebody close to you and ask them, what are your distractions? And I bet they can rifle off at least one or two things. And I bet they can also tell you what you need to be focusing on as well. And so that's my challenge for you today. Figure out what is your distraction. What's hindered you in 2018? But what can make your life completely different in 2019? Like I said, not by creating all these resolutions and doing all this. One thing. One distraction and one focus. Because I think if we do that, it will help us keep grounded in what the new year could look like for all of us. Or we can stay distracted. We can miss out on all this in front of us for 2019. We can miss out on our families. We can miss out on that incredible thing that God wants to do in our lives. We can miss out on those people that God wants to bring into our lives. We can miss out. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss out on another year. And I don't want to be classified as someone who is distracted. And so I found this verse as we close out our time together that I think helps us all reel everything back in and figure out what's most important. Earlier this year, our lead pastor, Jeff, kind of talked to us about how important it is that our relationship with God is right. But also, equally as important, our relationship with others is right. So he talked about the vertical relationship we have with God, and then he talked about the horizontal relationships we have with others. And when our relationship with God is off, it affects our relationship with others. And vice versa, if we're not taking care of people around us, it also affects our relationship with God. And so as we talk about our distractions, we ultimately have to talk about our distraction as far as being close or far from God. And I don't know about you, but I would love to be closer to God this year. I would love my relationship with him to look different. I want to be more like Mary this year and not Martha. 
when it comes to my relationship with God and my relationship with other people. And so here's what this verse says, Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. It reminds us to do this. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And that's what it does. That Don't distractions entangle us, keep us from what, the life that God wants us to live? And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And here's the part I want us to think about. Fixing our eyes on who? Jesus. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. If anything could change this year, for me, and my challenge is for you as well, that my focus wouldn't be on the distractions, it wouldn't even be on me, but my focus will be on God. And my focus will be on my relationship with him. And I know there's some of you in here that have this relationship with God and it's great and everything's going awesome. But I know there's some of you that maybe just stepped into church for the first time and you don't even know what that looks like. And my challenge for you would be to pursue that, whatever that could look like, to pursue that relationship with God. Talk to somebody, a friend, a staff member here, and we would love to help you with whatever you have questions about when it comes to relationship with God. But for those of us who do call ourselves Christ followers, let's focus back on what's most important. Let's put our focus back on God. And as we do that, allow the distractions in your life to not take up the priority that they are and to allow yourself to be fully present in 2019 with the life that God has created and called you to live. And so as we close our time together today, I just want you to close your eyes, bow your head for a moment. And I want you to think about the questions that we just talked about this morning. I want you to think about what, what is the distraction right now in your life that's just eating up too much of your time? What is that distraction? Identify it. Realize that it can be harmful. And then also, what do you want your focus to be this year? What needs your attention? I know there's plenty of people and things that need my attention more than ever. But who or what needs your attention? And as you think about those things, I want an opportunity to pray for you this morning. That as you leave here, that you could identify those distractions and also replace them with an incredible new focus so that all of our years can look different. Let's pray together. God, I thank you so much for just who you are, for the life that you've given us to live, the people that you've put in our lives, the places that you've put in our lives. God, all the opportunities that surround us every single day. And Lord, I just ask that whatever our distraction may be today, wherever we find ourselves focused on the wrong things, that, God, you help redirect us to focus on the right things. That, God, we would work on our relationship with you and our relationships with others so that 2019 can be a completely different year. God, I know this isn't an easy challenge, but I pray for each and every person that takes this on as they think about what you want to do in their life in this new year. We love you, we praise you, and, God, we just thank you for the lives that we get the opportunity to live and God, may we live less distracted this year because of it. As your name we pray, amen. And everybody said, amen. amen. Well, here's what we're going to do as we close out. Um, I was uh, listening to some different songs this week that we could kind of become maybe our declaration and anthem to what we just heard. And so we're going to kick it a little old school. It's an older hymn that has these great lyrics here, and I want to read them to you as we jump into this last song. It says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. See the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And if any prayer would be something that we would pray at the end of a service like this, I, I feel like these lyrics are spot on for us deciding to put our focus in a different place going into this new year. So I'm going to ask at all of our campuses, let's go ahead and stand up. And the bands are going to lead us through this last song. And I just want you to take these words 
and make them your words as we sing them out together today. We hope this message will help you continue to explore, experience, and express God's grace and truth for your life. If Atlee Church is making a difference in your life, we'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions from this message, we'd love to talk to you. Email us at stories at atleechurch.org. Check out our website for more about our community, our ministries, and how you can financially support Atlee Church to help us continue to share messages like this one. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. We have links on our website where you can search for us on iTunes to get this podcast every week. Thanks again and hope to see you next Sunday.